Hello everyone. So welcome to week 9, a continuous lecture from week 8 entitled Load Calculation Part 2. So in this lecture, we will discuss about solar heat gain and other uh, loads that happens when you have a space like fenestration, infiltration and also we will talk about shading, um, a house that's facing the sunlight or house that's facing the west, um, house facing the east, and also, how um, many also in that, and uh, many more. We will talk about how to design a house, a space based on not just the cooling load on the psychrometry chart, right? Based on the psychrometry chart, but other calculation that involve the sun. Okay, let's go to times page. Uh, so this is our times page as usual I would like you guys to go straight into the lecture section and open week 8 load calculation um, part 2 okay so these will be your uh, notes PDF for this lecture so use this as the reference so we don't have much slides in here uh, maybe around 48 slides if I'm not mistaken Okay, so let's start. Welcome guys to my week 9 lecture entitled Load Calculation Part 2. Um, we will discuss on the continuing section of week 8. So let's go back to our chapter details and I believe we have stopped at the indoor design criteria. And we will continue on the cooling load principles and uh, sorry. Uh, we will go to the uh, solar radiation section yeah okay so heating load so heating load is based on two, uh, two things uh, maximum heat energy required to maintain winter indoor design right uh, usually occur before sunrise in the coldest days and number two include transmission losses infiltration and ventilation Right, so when we design a heating load in the winter design, winter indoor design, we usually um, check uh, what is the condition during the sunrise of the coldest day. So we set that as our maximum design of heating load for winter season. Okay, so from there we can scale down uh, towards uh, maybe uh, five degrees increment from that coldest day of sunrise. Right, so that will be our datum or our benchmark. Uh, other than that, we need to include transmission losses. Um, for example, when heat is transferred maybe from geothermal or from boiler into our space, between this distance, what are the transmission losses occurred? maybe infiltration caused by um, leakage and also during ventilation where heat is exchanged into the air that is circulated into the space and outdoors so we need to assume a lot of things because um, if we don't use assumptions we cannot use most ideal gas case scenario we cannot use psychrometric chart so on and so forth so what are the assumptions number one all heating losses are instantaneous heating loads it means heat is lost indefinitely like a snap of a finger although we also we, we know that heat doesn't uh, uh, release or escape that way it takes time for heat to move from one high energy section to the low energy section section but for the sake of calculation for the highest load uh, of heating load we assume that it is instantaneous right that means t1 minus t2 that's all there's no need to do t1 minus t1.1 1.2 1.3 of every one millimeter increment from a point of heat uh, emission to heat uh, movement yeah solar heat gains and internal loads usually not considered so okay that means we don't really take uh, care or take it to calculation what happens at the sunshine into the space and also all internal loads such as maybe you bring in 50 people into the rooms 
uh, and the next day just one or two people into the room and maybe we bring in uh, servers into the room workstation computer workstation which emits a huge amount of radiation right so internal loads usually are not considered and latent heat often not considered unless with humidifier okay unless with humidifier that's all the last one of uh, load calculation part two is solar radiation okay let's go so define solar radiation the definition of solar radiation is sunlight that move from the surface of the sun remember from the surface of the sun and it move 8.3 minutes of travel uh, to 93 million kilometers that reach the surface of the earth right so even for uh, over a vast distance a numerous amount of energy reaches earth from the sun this energy is comes from the form of uv comes in the form of ir so uv is ultraviolet ir is infrared and also comes with the light spectrum that we see other than that it comes in radio wave uh, in millimeter wave i think it's millimeter wave and also in micro wave yeah okay um but in this case we will talk about mostly infrared where the sun energy is mainly coming from heat okay so solar radiation or irradiance is solar power per unit area that means what is the sunlight strength over a unit area or space units of watt per square meter or kilowatt per square meter is often denoted for solar radiation and irradiance is defined as area of the solar radiation is striking an imaginary surface unit we know that the sun is a sphere shape circular shape right so it emits sun uh, sunlight or energy from the middle of the gravity center of gravity and outwards but because of the curvature of the sun sunlight is moved Vein through the space in angle however because of the sheer size of the sun and also the small size of the planets you can assume that the sunlight comes in a straight line right in a straight line so how does the energy is, is gathered energy is gathered by the inverse square law states that radiance is reduced in the portion of inverse square law distance from the source that means as distance increase a huge amount of energy is reduced to cover the distance from the source to the space or this um, what do you call it uh, imaginary surface yeah okay so light radiation entering earth atmosphere consists of direct diffuse and albedo radiation so this is our atmosphere so light radiance comes directly straight ahead 90 degrees from the sun right because of the sheer size of the sun some of it is diffuse radiation absorbed into the clouds into the ozone right into the gases inside the atmosphere some of it comes direct radiation onto earth and some are albedo radiation that means the sunlight is reflected and deflected back into the sky and sometimes it is reflected and deflected from the um, maybe uh, gas warming um, global warming gases like carbon dioxide back onto the earth so albedo radiation is radiation that is bounced back to and fro from the sun to the surface and back to the earth all right another term that we need to know about sunlight or sun radiation is three things uh, from the angle of incidence so we also must know what is the location of the space or place right at that time of the day and that day of the year so for the equator most probably it's time of the day because throughout the year the sunlight is pretty much the same right but this is almost important for those who live in the winter countries or in the summer countries right so the three above parameters are defined as latitude for location on the earth hours of angle for time of the day and declination is for the day of the year so let's talk about this the first one latitude this defined as the angle between the lines joining op right op p is the position that we are talking about or the projection of p called op 
on the equatorial plane so this is the equatorial plane this is the center of the earth right and this p is somewhere on the north northern hemisphere so from op is the uh, projection of this place of p so the latitude i is the angle that is made of p o and a where a, where a is on the equatorial plane therefore the latitude along the longitude indicates the position of any point on earth and it varies from zero to the equator to 90 degrees to the poles so if we talk about p a space or a place on the earth at a, at a certain time of a day and a year so the sunlight might be the strongest or sunlight might not be the strongest so that is the first item when we want to consider solar radiation in the space that we built number two is the hour angle so we are going to talk about each and every hour of the day as the sun moves through the sky from the east to west so it is the angle between the projection of OP on the equatorial plane, the line O and A there, down there, and the projection of the line joining the center of the earth to the center of the sun. Alright, so this is the O bar there. So this is center of the earth to the atmosphere and straight to the center of the sun. Okay? So that line is called OB and therefore the hour of angle is A and O and B, right? A to O to B. So as sun moves from the east to the west, right? The so sun moves from the east to the west as we move, as the earth moves from west to the east, right? The hour angle from A to B to C to D throughout the 12 hours of daytime, right? So the sunlight might be different. The hour angle is the measure of the time of the day with respect to the solar noon. Solar noon occurs when the sun is at the highest part of the sky and solar angle is symmetrical with the respect of solar noon. Right? Uh, this implies that the hour of angle of sunrise and sunset on any given distance are identical. So we uh, uh, separate it into sunset and sunrise and to study for each hour at that point of hour of time the sun will be similar okay the hour of angle is zero degrees at the solar noon it varies from zero to 360 degrees in one of earth rotation therefore it takes 24 hour clocks to form one rotation each clock hour of the time is equal to 15 degrees of our angle for example at 10 a.m solar time right solar time that means as the sun moves at that place position on earth the hour angle is 330 degrees while at 4 pm it is 60 degrees so we begin at uh, 0 and backwards 360 into the 0 again and the next part the last part of uh, uh, solar incidence is called declination right just now we talk about how the earth moves from west to east and the sun moves in the sky from east to west every 15 degrees of earth movement is equal to one hour of sun exposure now we talk about declination because the earth is 23 degrees right 23 degrees downwards as it faces the sun right so it will not be similar as the sunlight reaches on that surface even in the equator uh, real countries the sunlight is not the same at certain point of time you have very hard sunlight at certain point, certain point of time you really don't have this high sunlight or high temperature during noon the declination of the angle between the line joining the center of the earth and the sun right and this projection on the equatorial plane is the angle between o o bar o o prime there and the line o b right and line o b so the declination is given by this equation 23.47 which is the declination of equator downwards facing the sun and the sine 360 degrees times 284 degrees plus n and divided by 365 days so n is the day of the year numbered from january 1st uh, to the end of the year therefore march 6 
or the 65th day of the year and from the above critical declination of Mars 6 will be negative 2.4 degrees Celsius uh, sorry 2.4 degrees downwards so declination happens when the earth moves around the sun and the sun is rotating 23 degrees downwards facing the sun okay facing the sun direction of sun rays the equatorial plane is steep 23.5 from the elliptical plane as earth revolves around the sun this orientation produces a varying solar declination some people have winter some people have summer and some people have high noon some people really don't have high noon at a certain point in time as the earth move uh, or rotate and also move around the sun in 265 days next uh, after the solar incident we will talk about the u factor right u factor u factor talks about shgc or solar heat gain coefficient so this is a fraction of incident of solar radiation admitted through a window so u factor talks about the absorptivity of sunlight through a window into a house so the expression of coefficient is between 0 to 1 1 is a full incident 0 is maybe a perfect wall that insulate the house from the sunlight the lower a window solar gain coefficient the less solar heat is transmitted that means this if the window is lower if the window is smaller if the window is not facing to the sunlight right direct sunlight then the shgc will be smaller now solar heat gain coefficient is the rate of heat loss as indicated in the term of u factor of a windows assembly i'm not really sure about what u factor means but there are some textbook says that as the sun goes into the house some of it is bounced back because of these properties of the uh, glass that we are going to talk later on right so the bounce back this is called like a u-turn the insulating value is indicated by the r value which is inverse of the u value so as u is the sunlight exposure right sun exposure r stands for the resistive value that often indicated by insulation properties of the house of the window so on and so forth the lower the u value the greater the windows resist to the heat flow and the better the insulating value so therefore if r value is lower so u value will be increased now talking about sun radiation there are visible transmittance they are non-visible transmitted a visible transmitter is an optical property that indicates the amount of visible light transmitted that means if you're sitting there near the window you can see the sun in the sky directly above you above the house at an angle that this light will just go into your place very effectively so the theoretical value between 0 to 1 right about the most value is between 0 0.3 to 0 0.8 now to, what is 0 and what is 1 again 0 is non-exposure at all and 1 is the fullest exposure possible next is air leakage heat loss and gain occur by infiltration through cracks and windows assembly so maybe here at the end of this uh, junction between the wall and the ceiling as well as the window uh, air can leak into and out from the house it is expressed in kiwi field of air passing through a square foot of small window area next is low e or emissivity of windows we talk about emissivity and the black body radiation in the past week on week eight so emissivity is the uh, emission that is uh, available for the window or the property of uh, of the window so if the glass is coated with silver or tin oxide which allows the visible light to pass through but reflects infrared heat you will have low emissivity just like the tinted uh, windows of cars and house right this reduces heat loss allow visible light to pass through but reflects infrared radiation that means the room can be bright but the heat can be low this will reduce heat gains and thus reduce the cooling load okay so all windows especially in those temperate climate countries will have these uh, label right the first one is the u factor 
So the lower the number, the better the insulation value. SHGC is 0 0.25, high number for cold climate, low number for warm climate. Right, visible transmission varies from 0 to 1. The higher, the more the light is transmit, transferred into the room. And lastly, air leakage, the infiltration based on CFM of a feet. Right, now let's go for different types of glasses for the windows. This is called single glaze with clear glass, which is very normal that we have around Malaysia. It has a U factor of 1.04. So it is depicted by big arrow and small arrow. Big arrow and small arrow. The bigger the arrow, the higher the SHGC. 86% of solar heat is transmitted into the space. Right? And VT, the visible light transmission is 90%. Okay, 90%. Next is a single glaze with bronze or grey tinted glass. So we put a tinted diameter of bronze or grey tinted glass. U factor is still the same, no, it's still the same, 1.04. But the SHGC is 73 of the solar heat, heat gain transmitted and the visibility is 68%, uh, percent, right? So the U factor is still the same, but there's a reduction in the solar heat gain and also a reduction of uh, brightness into the space. Double glaze of high solar gain, a low emission glass with argon and krypton inside the plane. So suddenly, UV refractor becomes lower. However, the SHGC is still not that low uh, compared to the bronze or, 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 or silver just now. On uh, about 71% of solar heat gain transmitted and 75% of visible light is transmitted. Next is triple glaze with moderate solar gain, low emission glass with argon or krypton gas inside the panes. And the UV factor drops even more. SSGC and VT also drop. 51% of solar heat gain is transmitted and 65% of visible light is transmitted. Now, we will go to the estimation of solar radiation through fenestration. Assuming the transitivity and activity of the surface is the same for direct, diffuse, reflected component of the solar radiation, the amount of solar radiation passing through a uh, transparent surface can be written as QSG, stands for solar gain. Solar gain. Now, it is a function of a vector as well. We have A as the area, area that is exposed to radiation in the bracket tau or the transmittiv transmittivity of the glass of direct diffuse and reflected radiation uh, and i it stands for total radiation incident on the surface and the fraction of absorbed radiation transferred into the door by conduction and conversion which is given by this equation which also can relate to this equation here yeah? and finally alpha Alpha is the absorptivity of the glass for direct, diffuse, and reflected radiation. So this is a fenestration or not infiltration but the light that is passed through a window. Alright? So usually it happens during daylight, of course. Heat and outside air can move into the uh, 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 glass pane. Visual communication to the outside world. Although we have a very cool space, we can still see the outdoors. Uh, for aesthetics, because tinted glasses always look nicer. Escape route in case of fires and low-rise building. So you can use this for the um, fire escape routes because you can see what happens outside. So this is direct and goes inside, and this is the rear reflected. So we can study what is the SHGC on that space. Now you have uh, learned solar heat gain coefficient. Now we will see the solar heat gain factor. So SHGC is heat flux to the solar radiation through a reference glass. So as it moves through a glass, the maximum SHGF or factor is given by different latitude, different months, different dip uh, uh, orientation of the Earth. We'll have uh, different uh, different data of a uh, solar heat gain. And these data are available in the Ashray Fundamental, which you can find in our library. 
I also have some of the, of the copy, uh, but maybe not all. So the unit will be in watt per meter squared, right? Or just get for any uh, position on Earth based on the latitude. Okay, so this is a snippet from the textbook, uh, from the handbook for Ashray. Maximum solar gain factor for sun glass located at 32 degrees uh, uh, north uh, in watt of a meter squared. So we have months on this side. And this is uh, no shade. Um, north and with a shade northeast and northwest that means the surface the facade or the building or the room is facing northeast or northwest and this is for the east and west southeast and southwest south and a direct horizontal uh, heat so you can see here the highest amount of emissivity or absorption is by the east and west facing of the sun so therefore, like I explained last few weeks, that solar radiation is very much important in designing a consistent. We will talk about now the shading coefficient. So if you have a window and you have a shade, so what is the shading coefficient other than using double or triple glazed window? For fun illustration, other than the given a reference as a glass, a shading coefficient as is defined such that the heat transfer due to solar radiation is given by Q solar gain equals to the surface times SHGF max that you get from the table and times SC, right? It's a shading coefficient. Sometimes it is given by the manufacturer or ashray because you can see from the top of the glass, you can just times it. And also the type of internal shading of that device. All right, so you can also use solar uh, shading coefficient for glass, a single glass or three thick, uh, three mm thickness thickness have no internal shading. If you have a Venetian blind or roller shade, so these are the new shading coefficient. So not just without any external shading, you will use Venetian blinds or roller shades, right? Sometimes I ask in the final exam. However, the final exam is not here, so therefore you are safe. At the external of shading uh, coefficient is given by this equation here. Yeah? Using the solar geometry, that means the sunlight comes into the place and you have a shade above the window, above the awning. <laughs> Anything that have shade can use this equation. So A is the unshaded area, right? Times SHGF max as because it absorbed the, or uh, received the sunlight times the SC shading coefficient. And also it equals to X and Y. What is X and Y is this? This is the window, right? The window, and this is the shading. So, what is the width and what is the height? Half height of y. And then you can use the equation and put it inside here. And what is beta? Is the altitude angle, and alpha is the uh, wall solar azimuth angle, right? So, you can have these angles from a table, or you can use a sextant to calculate the, the angle of the sun. Next is the ventilation for indoor air quality. Uh, let's read from the slide first. We need supply of fresh air into the air conditioned space, natural or mechanical means, for the purpose of maintaining acceptable indoor air quality. Yes, you can have the room to be very, very cold or comfortable, but somehow a trapped room equals to trapped air and equals to unhealthy lifestyle. So what we need is around 0 0.2 liter per second per person. How many people inside the room? So 0 0.2 liters per person per second, you times it. And then um, you will see all the solar gain and whatever, whatnot. Yeah? Uh, the actual ventilation of air required is much larger than the addition of the supply oxygen to the occupant. The ventilation air must dilute the order inside the occupant space to social acceptable level. 
B. Maintaining carbon dioxide concentration at a satisfactory level. C. Pressurizing the escape routes in the event of fire. So these are the uh, ventilation parts of IAQ. So other than the 0 0.2 uh, requirement per person, so what are the activities in the room? The application, the activity, do we have smoking inside the room? And also the uh, presence of combustion sources. So these are the functions of a building, right? Occupancy per 100 meter squared of uh, flow area is also given. Smoking and non-smoking also given for the OD outdoor air, right? And it is based on liter per second. So this table is given by Ashley to show what's the estimation of minimum of, of air required for ventilation or you can use calculation to calculate how much air is need for a certain number of people inside a space. Now let's do a cooling load and heating load due to ventilation and infiltration. Sensible heat transfer due to ventilation and infiltration is Q sensible V ventilation I infiltration equals to what is the M for outdoor air dot? What is the CPM? And what is the difference of T outdoor and T indoors? Right? So you can also change it to V dot and density because of this M there. And times CPM times the difference of temperature outdoor and indoor. Latent heat is due to ventilation and infiltration and also the inclusivity of water. Right? Sensible and latent heat transfer rate is given by the equation above will be positive during summer and negative during winter. Heat gain is positive Q. Heat loss is negative Q. Very simple. In order to find the required cooling capacity of the system, one has to take into account of sensible and latent load due to ventilation, leakage losses in the return air duct, and lastly, heat addition due to return of air fan. So what are the loads of a system due to ventilated air? The cooling coil has a bypass factor X and then the cooling coil of the coil due to sensible heat transfer of the ventilated air is given by QS which is the supply and vent equals to M dot van 1 minus X. So X is effectively will be given CPM and delta T where M van and V van are the mass and the ventilated flow rate uh of the ventilator x is the bypass of the cooling factor so this also must be taken into account uh how much energy is saved during the bypass and what kind of load that you have saved at this special uh, method and the latent heat load just now is uh is just a cooling call and the latent heat load on the call due to ventilation is given by this equation with the inclusivity of water or humidity ratio right and HFG here is the latent ventilation of vaporization of water. All right. Therefore, that concludes our subject with solar radiation. I thank you for your time, and um, don't uh, all right. That concludes our uh, lecture on week nine. That includes heating load and solar radiation. Okay, thank you. Isn't that quick? <laughs> okay, so solar radiation is also important when you want to design a space that is facing the sunlight because throughout the whole galaxy, the star or the sun is the main source of heat for life and for the planets. And so therefore, in the case of Earth, it is also important to study uh, how the sun really affects the uh, position of the um, uh, country and the uh, position of the district and the house and also the position of the declination of the uh, equator uh, and also what else mm, the hour angle so these are not just supplementary chart important but also solar is important as well okay so we will study week 10 our final lecture which we talk about i think ducting and fans okay so i'll see you around i'll see you in the meeting don't forget to study stay safe 
and I wish you all the best. Bye.